Welcome. Here's a very clever way to multiply numbers without multiplying them. Well, I'm kind of lying a little bit in my title. You do have to do a tiny bit if you just double numbers. For example, let me explain what I mean rather than put all these caveats to begin with. Let's work at 19 times 13 in a strange way. What we're going to do is imagine that these two uh, numbers are headers of two columns, a left column and a right column. And we're going to halve the numbers on the left and we're going to double the numbers on the right. All right, what's half of 19? Nine and a half. All right, I don't want to do, deal with fractions right now. Let's just ignore fractions and say half of 19 is basically 9. On the right, we'll double 13 and get 26. All right, again, what's half of 9? 4 and a half. Ignoring fractions, we'll just say 4. Half of, uh, double uh, 26 is 52. Half of 4 is a nice clean one this time. Is 2. Double the right is 104. Half of 2 is 1. Double the right is now 208. And we'll stop there. We'll stop at 1. All right, so we've halved the numbers on the left, ignoring fractions, and we double the numbers on the right. What we do now is a bit strange. I'm going to look at each row and I'm going to cross out each row that begins with an even number on the left. So there goes the 452 and the 204. And what I'm going to do now is add the numbers that survive on the right. 13 plus 26 is 39. Uh, that's basically 40 off by 1. Plus the 208, so it's going to be 248 off by 1, so it's going to be 247. Okay, 13, 26, 208, 247, and I claim that sum is the answer to our multiplication problem. 19 times 13 is 247. Strange. Um, just to practice, let's do it the other way around. Now there's no reason why to believe that th this you know, left and right column distinction is going to be commutative in some way, but 13 times 19 is going to have to be 247 again, so let's see if it shows it. Half of 13, 6 and a half. Ignore fractions, 6. Uh, double 19 is 38. Half of 6 is 3. Uh, 60, uh, 76 for the double 38. Half of 3 is 1 and a half. Ignore the fractions as 1. 140, 152. Okay, great. Ignore the rows that begin with an even and add the numbers to survive. 19 is basically 20. Uh, 20 plus 76 is 96. This is 95. 95 plus 152 is 252 off by 5, so it's 247. There it is. 13 times 19 is 247. As another example, let's do 10 times 211. We know what the answer is going to be. All right, half of 10 is 5. Double the right is 422. Half of 5 is 2.5. Just write 2. 844, half of 2 is 1, 1688. Uh, cross out the rows that begin with an even, that cross out that 2 and its partner, and cross out the original one, 10 and its partner, and add the numbers that survive, 2 and 8 is 0, 2 and 8 is 0, but there's one that was carried, uh, 4 6 is uh, 0 with another one that was carried, and there's one that's carried makes that 2. Oh, bingo. Alright, so the question is, why does this strange halving and doubling method work? And it's particularly peculiar the fact that we just randomly decide to ignore remainders that are fractions. Um, obviously, I'm going to give the answer away. That's going to be the next part of the video. So while I clear the screen, you might want to pause this video and see if you can figure out why does the strange halving uh, doubling method hold. Okay, here goes. I'm going to explain it. And I'll do it with a specific example. Let's do 19 times 13 again, the very first one. Okay, obviously we're halving and doubling, so I bet somehow the doubling numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, 32, and so on are going to take a key role in this puzzle. In fact, in fact, let's look at 19. 19 is indeed a combination of these numbers. It's actually a 16 and a 2 and a 1. So when I go 19 times 13, what I'm really doing is 16 times 13 plus 2 times 13 plus a 1 times 13. That is, I want to take the number 13 and keep it. I want to keep the double of 13. And I want to keep the double, the double, the double, the double of 13 and add those three results together. That's kind of given away what's going on. So let's see it in action. What I'm going to do is, remember, we start with the two columns headed by 19 and 13. But let me head it with 16 plus 8 plus 1 and the 13. So there's 19 on the left. And let's halve and double this column in blue. Half the left side is half of 16 is 8, plus half of 8 is 4, plus half of 1 is a half, but we know right fractions, and this is 26, which is really 2 times 13. Then we halve the left side again, half of 8 is 4, plus half of 4 is 2, and we double the right side, 52. Uh, well, that's really 4 times 13, double of 2 times 13. And then we halve the numbers on the left, plus uh, 1, and double numbers on the right, 104, which is really now double eight times, four times 13 is eight times 13. And then we halve the numbers on the left, one plus uh, half of one is half, but we ignored fractions. And then we got 208, which is really double of eight times 13, which is six times 13. 
All right, and then we ignored the columns that began with an even number. All right, so that is, we only want to add the terms with an odd number. Now, look at this. The only way a number on the left column is going to be odd is if a 1 is present in, that, it's in the sum that's on the left. All right, the fact that the very first line is odd, 19 was odd, tells me there's a 1 to begin with, and we want to keep that 13. Indeed, we want to keep 1 times 13. Now, the fact that a 1 exists on this bottom spot here, that this 1 exists, means there must have been a 2 in the line before it, which means there must have been a 4 in the line before it, which means there must have been an 8 in the line before it that we began with. That is, at some point, we wanted to do 8 times 13. So the fact that the 1 survived, this 8 survives halving 3 times, means that the, this, this row is exactly what we want, 8 times 13. 8 that gets halved 3 times, giving us the 1, tells me I really want the 8 times 13. And finally, the fact that the last, very last row is a 1, tells me that there must have been a 2 just before it, which means there must have been a 4 just before it, which means there must have been an 8 just before that, it means there must have been a 16 in the original problem, and we want the 16 times 13. Voila. There it is. We want the 16 times 13. So you do indeed want to add the 16 times 13, the 208, the 8 times 13, the 104, and the 1 times 13, the, the, one, the, the 13. And that must add up to 16 times 13, 2 times 13, da, 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 247. Uh, let's do another example just to make this clear because I think that kind of does it. Let me do the 10 times 211 example again. And we'll do this in a nice serious black. Uh, 10, whoops. Except I need my pen. 10 times 211. Well, that's really what is 10. In terms of the doubling numbers, it's 8 and a 2 and a 1 times 211, which means I want an 8 times a 211 plus a 2 times a 211 plus a 1 times 211. Here he goes. We write the number on the left, we write the number on the right, and we halve the numbers on the left. Here he goes. Half of 8 and a 2 and a 1 would be a 4 and a 1 plus a half, but ignore the half. And this is 422. Half of 4 and a 1 would be a 2 and a half, but ignore the fractions, 844. Half of 2 is 1, 1688. Alright, this is my 1 times 211. This is 2 times doubled. This is double of double, 4 times 211. And this is double of 4 times, which is 8 times 211. The fact that there's a 1 here means there must have been a 2 before, which means there must have been 8 before, which means there's an 8 in the original problem. Yes, I do want 8 times 211. I want to keep that line. There's no 1 in this one. Don't want to deal with it. But there's a 1 here, which tells me there must have been a 2 back in the step before, which means there must have been a 2 in the original problem. I do want 2 times 211. There it is. And in fact, there's a 1 at the very beginning, means that I do want 1 times 211. Indeed, I do. And those three sums, dum, 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 those with a 1 in it are the ones I want to add to get the answer. And the ones without a 1 in it are not relevant to what I need to do. So I might as well just cross them out to begin with. There it is. That's the multiplication. Uh, when I first learned about this, it was called to me Russian peasant multiplication. But I've not been able to track down the name of that. Um, it suggests that this may have been a popular method. I know that Egyptian scholars way, way, way back, four or 5,000 years ago, actually did a very similar method to this. They just continually doubled one number and then added the terms they wanted to work out with. They didn't lay it out in columns like this as far as I'm aware, but this, this doubling method is actually a very ancient technique for working out the product of two numbers. It's lovely. I think it's grand. It's kind of mysterious as I first presented it, but if you actually think in terms of powers of two, um, you can see what's going on in a beautiful way. In fact, computers use this method uh, to uh, multiply the product of two numbers. Everything's in binary and base two, so instead of writing ten, they say, okay, I need an eight, I need, don't need a 4, but I need a 2 and a 1. So 10 is going to be written, I need an 8, don't need a 4, I need a 2 and a 1. And actually to multiply numbers, you just keep halving. And the nice thing about halving computer science means you just lop off the last digit. You can keep track of this process very nicely and quickly. It's actually a very efficient algorithm for computing products of numbers in, when you actually work in base 2. So you might want to actually uh, play with this and work out the details. So suppose we worked in a base 2 system. How does this method look? You'll find it's actually beautiful, swift, and efficient and a lot of fun. All right, thanks so much.